Representative Garcia. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, to the two members of the panel. Before I make my remarks, I just have to preface this by saying that for all of the talk of protecting religious freedom, I can't believe what the administration and its representatives here are telling us and the, and the exchange that is taking place and how sacrilegious it really is. Since taking office, <laughs> Donald Trump has relentlessly tried to fund construction of an ineffective wall at the cost of taxpayers, the environment, and indigenous peoples as we see today, all while helping his friends make profits at the expense of our communities, such as in waiving the procurement process. It's beyond egregious and repugnant to think that this administration, one that pushes for religious freedoms, is also violating the sanctity of the ancestral lands of indigenous people in our country. The administration continues to bypass environmental regulations and other laws in its efforts to construct the border wall. But it will not go unchecked, not while Democrats control the House. Dr. Ortiz, in what ways is it within the purview of the federal government to actively engage in tribal consultation, and why is that consultation important? Tribal consultation is a critical way in which we demonstrate, demonstrate the federal respect for, the, for tribal sovereignty and the government-to-government -government relationship we have with tribes. When we act to protect archaeological, historical, cultural, natural resources that are of importance to Native Americans, we are acting consistent with the federal trust responsibility. Can you elaborate on the current barriers that hinder effective consultation with the tribes? There are several current barriers. Um, and among those that came out most frequently in GAO's review were um, those dealing with the timeliness of notification and the adequacy of notification, whether or not a tribe that had um, ancestral or treaty rights in an area was actually notified. Um, we've also noticed there have been problems with um, whether or not agencies genuinely weigh tribal input, I think. Um, the, uh, as um, one representative said earlier today, the, the going through the motion of compliance rather than actually weighing input and acting with the respect that a government-to-government -government relationship merits. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cameron, do you feel that your agency has done an adequate job in consulting with the tribes? Yeah. Uh, Congressman, as a general principal, uh, I know Assistant Secretary Sweeney has been involved in numerous tribal consultations around the country. In the particular instance we're talking about today, the, uh, the, the Congress passed a statute that provides for an expedited process for construction of, of, a, of a border wall, and the uh, administration has chosen to exercise the authority that the Is Congress Is the consultation gave adequate? Uh, adequacy, Your opinion. Adequacy, I think, is probably in the eye of the beholder, uh, Congressman. What I can tell you okay, is Okay, thank I'm, you. In your testimony, you note that the agency has conducted 90 formal consultation sessions on 17 topics and 30 informal listening sessions with tribes. What's the difference between a formal consultation and in, and an informal listening session? Uh, I'm afraid I'm out, you're, I'm out of my legal depth to give you a precise answer. Okay. I'd be happy do you, to do that. Do you consider record. emails a form of consultation? I consider emails a form of communication. Um, Are they consultation? Uh, all I can tell you is that the, the department and CBP have taken steps to communicate regularly with the tribe. 
uh, with the affected tribes in, in terms of activity uh, on the border, and we made a good faith effort to understand uh, the tribe's concerns and to try to address them. Regardless of what you say, this administration is bulldozing through and desecrating sacred sites with little to no consultation with the tribes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.